Good afternoon all. Um, my name's Jeff Houston. I'm with APNIC. I have 15 minutes. This is going to be quick. Um, how many folk think we're actually running a really, really good network? And you go, well, I do a fantastic job. The network just works. It's just brilliant. I was looking as part of trying to measure DNSSEC, and I was looking at the percentage of folk who can't resolve a DNS name with one query. Because typically the way the DNS works is you get a name, you send out your query to your resolver, you get an answer and you just move on. One packet, one RTT. 25% of the world can't. The way we found this out was we're using an online advertising network and we sample around half a million folk every day from all over the planet. And what we've found is the long-term average, about one quarter of folk have really, really crap DNS. Totally shit house. And what's worse is that around 6% of them take more than two seconds to resolve a name they've never seen before. So it's about one in 12 folk, which the DNS is a complete sodding nightmare. And you sort of sit there and go, why, if we all think we're doing such a fantastic job, is the DNS so crap for so many folk? Obviously, something is really weird about the DNS. So what's going on here? Um, there are lots of reasonable reasons you can't figure out how to do a decent resolver. You get it wrong. No one's paying you to do a good job. Or maybe the user themselves has picked the wrong resolver. So what's the relationship between users and resolvers? Now, that's a really good question. Because when you look at it from the perspective of ooh, someone like the NSA, for example, why bother trying to spy on what users do in web logs and so on when you can find out everything you need to know from DNS logs? The DNS resolver query logs are about the richest vein of information on the net that we have. It's actually real-time information about what you and I and everyone else does. You can get astonishingly good demographics. So where you resolve and who gets that information is actually a really interesting kind of question. So. I'm starting to try and get interested now in to what extent this is information leakage. And what I'm really interested in is how many folk leak their DNS queries across network boundaries? And how many folk actually leak it across national boundaries? Because once you start leaking it across national boundaries, all those traditional protections that we thought we had as citizens don't apply where in the country where your data is residing, you're an alien and you have no protection under their law. So part of this issue is the internet starts to create all these challenges about where is our information heading to? And part of the reason why is it's actually all about the DNS. So as I said, we use an online advertising campaign to measure a whole bunch of things. Pretty typically, it's all about measuring how much V6 is out there and who's using it. You don't want to know. Uh, it's also about measuring the use of DNSSEC and how many folk actually do validation. Slightly better, but you don't want to know. But what we're also able to do is to match a DNS query to an authoritative name server against the resultant end user address that does the subsequent URL fetch. And we can put them together. So we can match the IP address of the resolver you use against your address. So across 2014, Google Ads are really good, really, really, really good. 104 million sample points. And we picked up a little under half a million unique resolvers that actually send their queries to authoritative name servers, i.e. us. This is skewed data because we're cheap bastards. Google present our ads in cheap countries. So we need to do a bit of catch up afterwards to normalize this to actually compensate where there are richer countries that bid higher for ads than we're prepared to bid. But with a little bit of normalization, you get to this thing. These are the resolvers that ask us the most questions. That looks bloody weird, doesn't it? 74.125. God, who owns that address? Well, you know, if you add the origin AS, it's all Google. This is Google's 888 resolver farm. So counting individual IP addresses doesn't work. What about if we group them by AS number? That gets a little bit more interesting. Google have 34% of the market share of the global DNS. 
holy crap, that's weird. I'm not even sure that that's true. China comes in second with 3%. That looks more like it. There are an awful lot of Chinese. But even so, this is still a little bit weird. And I suspect that's because when Google has its resolver farm, I actually get multiplied queries from time to time. So the one query comes in and a number of slaves say, I can do this, I can do this, all over themselves with enthusiasm and over ask. I can compensate for that by making sure that I only count one resolver for each unique question. And this then leads to the following list, which seems more credible. This is across all of 2014. Google had for that entire year an average of just a little bit under 10% of market share. So for all of you people here, that group over there, use Google. Huge. Uh, the next one is, of course, the Chinese. There are a lot of Chinese, and they do centralize their DNS, uh, oddly enough. So the China net backbone has about 9.5% for exactly that reason. The only other open resolver system that I can see in that list is actually OpenDNS, which currently claims around 1.3% of the world's users. And the rest seem to be based around ISPs. Larger ISPs are well represented, smaller ones less so. So let's try and find the aliens among this. Let's see if the user and the resolver is in the same network and get rid of those. Let's look at folk who do their resolution in another network. And that gets rid of a lot of them, but I'm still left with Google being one of the larger of the folk who, if you will, resolve other customers' queries. Then open DNS and then level three. I think level three run all fours, don't they? A lot of folks seem to use it. And then, oddly enough, China Telecom again. So 27% of end users use a resolver in someone else's network. They don't use a resolver in their own network. A little under one in three, which is a lot. So let's do a little bit more filtering and look for when your resolver is in another country. And for this, I put Google in its own country because it's so bloody big, it is its own country. And this is now the list of folk whose resolution is handled in another country. Two thirds of that's Google, Open DNS, level three. Liberty, Liberty spans about five countries in Europe. So it's no surprise it's up there because that one AS is smeared across five countries, but it's registered in only Austria. Level three again, uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, NTT, you can read as well as I can. 15% of users, 15% of users, around one in six have their resolution done in another country. So who keeps their queries local? Uh, the Koreans keep their queries local, Uruguay. The Chinese, obviously enough, their queries go through their firewall for the most part, the queries are kept local. So that's the list of folk who manage to keep their DNS in their own country. And this is the folk who don't. Uh, Martinique doesn't have any resolvers in Martinique, as far as I can tell nor does Algeria, and you go, well, you know, that's cool. Vietnam, two thirds of the folk in Vietnam send their queries elsewhere, Google. Um, the same happens in Niger, Cyprus, Syrian Arab Republic, Burundi. Some of these you'd think would do a better job, others don't. Can we map it? Hell, why not? This is the United States. And these are the countries where folk who, if you will, map to the United States, use resolvers that are located in other countries. Now, admittedly, the raw numbers are very, very scarce, so I did scale it up to make the colors all work. But as you see, there's a healthy distribution of the queries going to China. And oddly enough, to Jamaica, um, to the UK, and so on. So a small amount of, of the US send their queries elsewhere around the globe. What about Canada, since we seem to be in North America after all? Same thing, an awful lot of Canadians who do send their queries elsewhere, and um, if I can read it right, about four or 5% of, of Canadians, huge amounts send their queries into China. Why you would do that beats me with a stick. But those are the raw numbers. You can look at it online to actually find out the ranking there. But as you see, an awful lot in the US, uh, Taiwan, UK, China, and so on and so forth. Um, what about the Chinese? Well, the Chinese sent a lot of their queries into the United States and Australia. God knows why. I'm sure we'd never give them the right answer anyway, but they seem to send their queries there no matter what. 
And so I'm having fun here. I'm mapping India again. The Indians send their stuff to Russia as much as to the US. God knows why. I certainly don't. Um, and then I'm thinking, you know, a lot of this really is just Google. So how much market share does Google have? And I was busy plotting Google through the year, and you sit there and go, well, 10, 11, 12%. And then in mid-November, Google jumped. And these days, around one-fifth of all DNS queries come from Google's public DNS servers. So what happened in November? I have no idea. I have my suspicions, and I suspect, although without having a clue, that maybe Google Chromecast or one of those other forms of inbuilt apps decided not to trust the local infrastructure. And instead, on some kind of firmware upgrade, decided to send all of their queries from the app directly into all eights. But the DNSSEC validation rates didn't change. So my suspicion is not only are they using all eights, but they've got DNSSEC checking disabled. There's an awful lot of folk with these kinds of apps, because as we all know, the internet is built for video streaming. Everything else is incidental bullshit. Um, so who uses Google's public DNS? Well, that's the map of where Google is used. An awful lot of folk in the US, an awful lot of folk in China, interestingly enough, India, Nigeria, and of course that well-known US supporting country, Brazil, uh, and little bits of Russia as well. It's a fascinating distribution because in terms of absolute terms, this is certainly where the high populations are, but it's not where you'd necessarily think those countries would like to spin all their information off to somebody else about their DNS queries. That's the list if you're interested, it's on the slide pack. But if I normalize this out to country populations, which countries send their traffic to Google is a subtly different question, and that map is a subtly different answer. Google has made the most difference in Africa, and interestingly also in the Middle East, where an astonishingly large number of each indigenous national population sends their queries off to Google, and that's the table we see of this. So what does this say about the DNS? Google's won. A huge amount of the DNS is now sitting inside Google's public DNS system. Right now, one in five queries come from Google's public DNS to me. In other words, an awful, awful lot of users are making a move through Google for their DNS. Why? Well, I think the second bullet's actually really important. Because these days, a huge amount of regulatory action involves doing DNS blocking. The pirate bay.se is evil, therefore our resolvers will not resolve it. Well, whose resolvers will? Google. So if you think that national content blocking is DNS, then all of a sudden Google says, well, actually, that's bullshit. Just use us. And that's what happened. There's also this entire thing about using the DNS to do geolocation. Netflix thinks I'm in the US because my DNS resolvers happen to be this, this, and that. How do I make Netflix think that I'm a US citizen so I can access their awesome video library of shit? Well, I change my DNS resolvers to something in the US and I become a US person for Netflix, pay them their six bucks a month and everyone's happy. My DNS looks like shit because all my resolution is happening to the US, but I can watch Netflix so I'm happy so I don't care. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> also, I suspect there's an awful lot of DNS monitoring and stalking, and it's much, much harder to find it. I talked, I think, a nanog or two before about URL stalking and how I found a browser in China that just leaked like a sieve. I suspect there are DNS queries and DNS stalking is happening all the time. Finding it out is actually much, much harder because unlike URLs, the DNS doesn't give you clear signatures of who's doing it. So it's a little bit tougher, but I suspect there's an awful lot of DNS stalking going on. Last but not least, if I want to own you, I put a virus on you, what do I do? I change your DNS resolvers, because then I've got you. And I suspect there's a little bit of that going on too, that owned systems tend to have their re resolution happening somewhere else. Of course, I'm not authoritative on this. I don't do malware for a living. You might. If so, you have a favorite theory inserted at the bottom. Um, where's all this heading? I suspect that the DNS is aggregating like crazy and it's not a competitive market anymore. 
ISPs don't get paid for DNS resolution. It's a loss, not a revenue. And outsourcing it to Google and simply going, I don't care, just send it off to someone else, is easy. It's simple. It gets rid of the problem, but it aggregates a market up with a different player. At what point will they data mine? They claim they don't now, and I believe them. That's fine. But you've got to admit, no matter how good your intention, that's one of the richest streams of real-time information about what people do. There was an XKCD cartoon that said, you know, we've turned off search, we've turned off Google Docs, we've turned off Gmail, we've turned off everything. Google public DNS is enough. And they're right. It is enough. So is it possible to reduce that information exposure? What can we do about making the DNS better, about being a massive leak of information? And what's the nature of that trade-off between resolution performance and information leakage? Because where we are now is in a savagely unequal battle between you and I as users and information aggregators and data miners. It's just not working. Um, I put the data online, but I put it behind a bunch of maps. If you want to play with the maps anywhere, just click on a country. That URL will take you there. I had 15 minutes. I've got one minute to go for questions. Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Zhang Xiao. I'm from TripAdvisor. I'm wondering if you also happen to look at the front-end and back-end IP of the resolver. So one thing that I have noticed that's interesting is a lot of the open resolver are actually just forwarders only, and like 80% of them are actually using Google public DNS as their recursive resolver. So some of those do align with the data that you are presenting here, but I think one of the interesting thing is what are the front end IP those users are actually using versus the back end IP that come out of the, the authoritative services? I, I said before that in, the DNS is an information leak. It just leaks so much information, it's not funny. Oddly enough, one of the things it doesn't tell you is about itself. When you get a query from a recursive resolver to the authoritative resolver, it tells you nothing about why that query has happened. There is no history. So I cannot tell how that resolver or why is asking me that question. What I do know is sometime before that, I sent a URL to a particular user. So I understand the original IP address of the customer, and I'm seeing a DNS query. I know nothing about the chain of DNS query events. So unfortunately, that information isn't in the DNS. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Randy. Randy, Bo Randy Bush, hi, Jay. Jeff, I think, uh, just to quibble, you're confusing market. The market in DNS is selling authoritative service and registration. That's why people are willing to talk us out the resolution, because there's no market. So saying that Google has 10 or 12 percent of that market is a little confusing. I understand, and I'm actually pointing out there is a new market in data mining the DNS, and that is the market I'm talking about. And I think it's a scary market. I agree that it's scary. I, let's no, not go down this one. I, don't, I use Google almost nothing. But um, yeah, no one, very few people have the scale and the tools to exploit that market. Right, I agree. Dave Temkin, Netflix. I'm going to start a Netflix drinking game so that whenever someone comes up and makes a technical accusation about Netflix, I'm going to do a shot. I think by lunchtime, I'm going to be trashed. <laughs> Actually, you see if I can get it by breakfast. Um, yeah, thanks. So uh, we don't use DNS for directing anyone. We don't use that for figuring out what country you're in. That data is terrible. Uh, we use a third-party geolocation provider that's slightly better, which I'm sure bases some of their data off of DNS. Uh, when you come to our site, we look at your IP, if, uh, and we do a lookup on that IP against the geolocation table. We either redirect you to the correct country site or tell you service is not available. We know that the data in DNS is terrible, and when we set out to build our own CDN, the very first thing we did was go, we're going to figure out how not to do this with DNS. And I had very, very heated arguments uh, with, uh, with my peers about even putting the names of our CDN servers into DNS because they were like, oh, what if people start using that for localization? So no DNS here. Yeah, right. My problem, though, Dave, is 
I've seen the amount of Google use jump by 5% globally overnight. Yeah. So somebody somewhere in a violently popular application or service, that application or service had flicked over to using Google's public DNS with checking disabled. And I'm searching for incredibly popular apps. Right. And when I search for incredibly popular apps, I think you'd agree, Netflix is part of that search space. I know, no you're telling knows. me you're not the target this time, We're and that's fine. <laughs> um, no, so we've absolutely seen devices, routers, things like that. I'm stealing his thunder a little bit because he's yeah. going to say some of this. Um, we've seen devices that have Google's DNS hard coded in them, either by default. You mentioned the open DNS thing in like Netgear or something yep. like that. But um, we've absolutely seen that both in consumer devices, not even the routers, but like a streaming stick or a TV where they just go, oh, well, this is ubiquitously available. Now, all of a sudden, everything should just be Google. Yep. Hi, this is Dan Ellis from Cloud Helix. And I'll follow up on what Dave said. Um, we are seeing, or previously, I saw quite a few routers that have proxies in them for DNS. And those proxies are horrible. So an increasingly number, large number of applications started by saying, if I can't get an answer from my local DNS provider, which is a router, then I'm going to go to Google. And now some applications are even on first attempt, just going straight to Google. Right. I'm sure that explains some of it. But I think it's about the 10th of November. Somebody turned something on globally. And that's the one I'm hunting for. My current, my current best candidate, if it's not Netflix, is Google's Chromecast. But we'll see. Hello, yeah. um, Alex Simiak, uh, uh, Curator Labs, uh, just a small addition. I talk to uh, a lot of operators in uh, my countries uh, and in Europe uh, and some other operators and probably I just to, uh, I, I, I can add something. The problem is that DNS for operators is something like IT services and we are operators, we are not about IT services, we are about routers, switches, and so on. And a lot of operators are, are trying to get rid of those services. And that's why Google is popular, because operator, a lot of operators who doesn't care about this part, just doesn't care. So you um, care about the delivery of bits, you care about the service you deliver to your customers, and you go and you think, ah, oh, the DNS is irrelevant, stuff it. Uh, Good thinking. It's not my thinking. <laughs> I'm just uh, <laughs> describing the situation. It's bad. That's it's bad. bad, definitely. That's a evil. But uh, that's something we have, and we need to do something with this state of mind, actually. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Thank you very much.